Hi, I'm Levi Sivian. And I'm Elena Fragamini. Welcome to the second year of the transcript. This week, the transcript explores the social and academic experience of ELL students at Northampton High. Hamped up gets some sports season predictions with the fall team captains. We examine recent controversies surrounding profit and black culture and evaluate some Labor Day activities. Texas is in the process of recovering from Hurricane Harvey, which made landfall on August 25th and dumped 51 inches of rain onto Texas and Louisiana over a six-day period. Approximately $75 billion in estimated losses were sustained. Catastrophic flooding occurred in Houston and surrounding communities, causing widespread displacement. This week, Hurricane Irma is expected to hit U.S. territory. Hurricane Irma is a Category 5 storm, with sustained winds well over 157 miles per hour. On Tuesday, U.S. Attorney General Jeff Sessions announced the Trump administration's plan to rescind the Deferred Action for Childhood Arrivals policy, known as DACA. The policy was instated during the Obama administration and allows undocumented immigrants brought to the U.S. as children to apply for work permits and register for renewable two-year periods of legal residency. Approximately 800,000 people registered with the government when the program was enacted. The announcement to rescind DACA was met with protests across the U.S. Hi, I'm Flor Castillo and welcome to Tell It Like It Is. This week I had the opportunity to sit down with ELL students and teachers to discuss the English language learning program in Northampton Public Schools. I explored the social and academic experiences of an ELL student at NHS to answer the question, does the ELL program foster isolation in the school community? I've been teaching for eight years, ELL students. The ELL program is a program that is federally uh, mandated. I can see how people might think that they're isolated from school because of where the classroom itself is located and also because, for example, one student might have more than one class with me or Miss Berlin. I adapted my lessons um, to try and reflect a need for students to read, write, um, listen, and speak in English every day. I decided to offer a lot of Spanish resources to my students, including um, Spanish versions of a textbook, Spanish versions of um, my class notes, and a lot of the vocabulary words around the room and posters around the room I translated into Spanish. I think that I have noticed a separation between ELL students and non-ELL students, and I think that's probably just because people like to congregate with friends that are kind of in the same boat as them. ¿Cuál ha sido tu experiencia en el programa de ELL? Um, Fue una buena, es una gran experiencia porque um, tú, cuando tú vienes de otro país, tú no vienes con el un inglés. Ha sido buena, he eh, conocido personas de nuevos países. ¿Tú sientes que el programa de ILL o los, y los estudiantes de ILL están como que aparte de la escuela, de la comunidad de escuela? Sí, porque no es el mismo idioma y es difícil adaptarse con otras personas que no sepan el idioma. Yo pienso que es casi lo mismo porque son, es como gente que no sabe el inglés, pero a la vez están en clase, um, estudian los estudiantes de la high school, es casi lo mismo para mí. ¿Hay algo que el distrito pudiera hacer para, para este, hacer mejor tu experiencia de escuela? Eh, tener ayuda en otras clases, que nos ayuda a traducir. Eso está bien, que tengan una clase de inglés en cada escuela sería bueno por... Hay, muchos, hay muchas personas como nosotros, americanos, inmigrantes. Many non-ELL students in the school community help make ELL students way through school more welcoming. And I encourage you to be one of them. I'm Flor Castillo and this was Tell It Like It Is. Hi, I'm Gabe Nicotera, the new reporter for Hamped Up, and I have one question. Y'all ready for this?
fall is here, and we're going to look at a few nationwide events that happened in sports over the summer. Floyd Mayweather defeated Conor McClinton, I mean Conor McGregor, in a total knockout that happened on August 26th. The fight was valued at over $700 million. Second, the Celtics acquired Kyrie Irving from the Cleveland Cavaliers in exchange for Jay Crowder, Ante Zizek, Isaiah Thomas, and a 2018 first-round draft pick. Finally, Tokyo, Japan mercyed Lufkin, Texas 12-2 in the Little League World Series final, giving them their 11th win as a country. Better luck next year, Americans. I asked all fall team captains to give me a prediction on their record in this upcoming season. Let's see how confident they all are this year. Can I have a prediction from you as to what your season's record is going to be this year? I think that will be 12-6. and six. In the years past, our record has been a little bit better, but we got moved up to a better league, and we play Longmeadow, Agawam, Minichog, and some of the better teams more than once, so I think we'll have a few more losses in there. Uh, yeah, I just feel like our team is really strong this year, and I honestly believe that we'll go undefeated. I think that out of our 18 games, we'll win 13 to 14 of them. Uh, I'm going to say 9-9, nine and nine, I think. Uh, we got a pretty solid squad this year, so better than last year, definitely. I think we're, we're going to play well. I think we're going to go 6-2. and two. Uh, I think we have a good team that a lot of people don't really understand. They don't believe in us, and they don't think we're going to win games. But I think we're going to come out and make the playoffs and win a lot of games. So 6-2. and two. I think that our team will go undefeated this year. Um, we don't want to jinx it, but we're looking forward to a very strong season, maybe undefeated. NHS is on a roll as field hockey, golf, and girls soccer are all 1-0. The football team has their first game against Amherst High School on Friday, September 8th at 7 p.m. The boys soccer team faces off against East Long Meadow on the 8th as well. Thanks for watching Hamped Up. I'm Gabe Nicotera. Hi, I'm Odette Bennis, and welcome back to Hit It or Miss It, where all things pop culture and style are covered. In the beginning of August of 2017, Kendall and Kylie Jenner, reality TV stars and entrepreneurs, were both caught in a big lawsuit over the use of imagery of late rappers Tupac Shakur and Biggie Smalls. The Jenner sisters opened up a new clothing line called Kendall Plus Kylie, where they featured a vintage tea line. Many called out the sisters for profiting off of black culture and exploiting Tupac and Biggie. I think the fashion industry profits off of uh, any product that has a marketable base. So the pro the, do they in the industry make money off of black culture? Um, certainly, I, I don't think that's, uh, that's, that's undeniable. I do think that it's an example of profiting from black culture only in that um, Biggie Smalls and Tupac are kind of iconic so, strictly speaking, can he take their stuff without paying for it? No. I think pop culture uh, has always, the new, people are always, especially younger people of all colors are always looking for something new. I think the big question is who owns pop culture? I think that black culture is, is very popular. I don't know specifically about that case. I mean, I, I wouldn't want to just say, oh, well, they're guilty of anything without having having looked at the case and uh, is it ethically or legally there's an issue about whether or not it's whether or not it's fair game or whether or not it's whether or not it's legally acceptable and that's what the courts are going to have to deal with my curiosity would immediately be uh, around around just how much they were trying to manipulate this response how much were they trying to make people uh, guess or wonder how much were they trying to make people say oh my goodness it's it's Kylie or Kendall with with cornrows. Um, how much were they were they intentionally trying to stimulate this this reaction, this response? And that that would be culturally significant for me personally. I don't I don't have a problem with 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 people sort of stepping in doing it. I don't I've never been offended by people taking stuff that I hold important to myself and and adopting it and making it something that's important. It's the way that ideas get spread. It's the way that culture gets spread. And as you were explaining the scenario, the first thing I thought is are they paying royalties uh, to the estates of of those performers because you can't just you can't just take someone's image and make money from it. So what do the NHS students think about this issue? Yeah, I'm not. I'm not sure what the law is. So like, maybe it was legal, but um, definitely wrong. It's disrespectful to the families. Well, Tupac and Biggie, they're both dead, so they should. They should at least ask the families. They're making money off of someone else's material right. without their permission, and therefore it is not. Legal. The families of Tupac and Biggie are still falling through the lawsuit, and the case is still in question. Thank you for watching, and tune in next week with Hit It or Miss It. Hey
Welcome to the other stuff. I'm Christian, this is Eli. Here's what we did this week. Every year, the city of Northampton looks forward to one of its oldest and most cherished traditions. Each Labor Day, our fair city is visited by the annual Three County Fair. Thousands of people from across the Pioneer Valley come to the carnival, whether it be for the rides, the food, the animals, the charming people, or the events. The fair provides one of our town's most beloved and sacred conventions. Yeah, we didn't do that though. No, God, absolutely no. not. We went to the Sox game. This may be a matter of opinion, but we think going to a Red Sox game is a couple steps above going to Three County Fair. What struck us as particularly surprising is that price-wise, it's a bit closer than you may have thought. Going to the Three County Fair is shockingly expensive. If you're an adult, you can't even walk through the front gate without paying $12. And unless you look like you're 12, you're paying that full price. Not to mention, if you wanted unlimited rides, you'd have to shell out an additional $25 for the wristband. Despite the socks tickets costing more than $12, they're more reasonable than you might think. $32 a pop got us pretty solid seats along the first baseline. And when it comes to food, the Three County Fair might have more options, but for an item like a hot dog, they can even be more expensive. Hot dogs at the fair can run you up to $6 depending on where you look. But at the game, an iconic Fenway Frank is delicious and a bargain at $5.25. So next Labor Day weekend, we say the longer drive is worth your time. Try spending your money on America's oldest ballpark instead of America's oldest fair. Wait, what? America's oldest fair? Yeah, it's like 200 this year. I don't like it that much. Yeah, yeah I, well, I, let's just ask what the Sox fans had to say. Would you rather be here or at a carnival right now? Who goes to a carnival? Ah, nice! <laughs> Thanks for watching. Catch us next week when we do something else. Thanks for watching. Each week, Levi and I and our incredible new team of reporters and videographers will be working to bring you the transcript every Friday morning that school is in session. Episodes and online extras come out at 7.30 a.m. and can be found at nhstechnology.org. If you have an idea for a story, email communications at northampton-k12.us. And if you'd like to be a guest anchor, sign up outside of room G16.